Hi guys, thank you so much for coming back to my channel and all the great comments and emails I received from you. This is going to be a very exciting video today for all of you who want to work more efficiently but don't want to sacrifice quality and aesthetics. For all of you who are new to this channel, I'm your host MDT and I'm posting new videos around mastering dental technology every Friday. So make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell and get updated on the latest content. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use great new microlayering techniques you can use either on Emacs or Sarconia cores. The units you will be seeing in this video are designed in three shape with two special libraries I created. And in a follow up video, I will show you how to use them and how you can design them yourself. So enough talking, let's get at the bench and let's get started. <laughs> So welcome back to the video. On the right side I have used a dentin cut bag and on the left side a facial cut bag. I already finished the wash bag for the units and for all of you who want to know how I did this, all I did is on the dentin cut bag adding a little thin layer of ivory color glaze paste fluo and some ivory color dentin shade at the gingival to enhance the chroma. On the facial cut bag at the incisal, I added ivory color sapphire, and what that does is to give the incisal edge the illusion of transparency. It is still a full contour lingual, and most of the light is getting blocked. That's why I added this little bit of sapphire on there to give it this incisal look. I also added a bit of ivory color gray between the mammalongs to create more depth. And what I found out works also really great on the facial cut bag is to use Mayo from Jensen with the wash bag. But today we're concentrating more on the detailed layering of the dentin cut bag. I will be posting on how to layer the facial cut bag in a very natural way as well. So please be patient with me and they're all coming soon. The dentin cut bag can be used with an Emacs MT and LT ingots, as well as with translucent zirconia. If you're going with zirconia in this case, my favorite choice is MT from Ivoclar, just to stay in the system. But you can use any other high translucent or medium translucent zirconia on the market as well. The solid dentin cut bag has the advantage that it does not shrink anymore. I used to build up dentin when I was layering on cores in ceramic and what I found out is the more dentin and the more porcelain I was using, the more the unit was shrinking. So this one does not shrink anymore. The first thing I'm adding is power incisal 1 on the mesial and distal incisal edge. I'm building it more up than out to walk a too bulky facial appearance that I have to grind back later on. In the video, it looks like I'm adding a lot, but remember this is micro layering, so don't overbuild it. I'm using power incisor from Ivoclar because when dealing with medium and low translucent materials like MT or LT, the value of the final crown would be too low. So everybody has seen final crowns that appear way too gray and way too low in value in the patient's mouth. So what power incisor does is raises the value and compensates for the low value core. To create a translucent incisal edge, I'm adding OE1 from Ivoclar, which is a very translucent opalescent material. In the Ivoclar ceramic system, you have OE1 through OE5. And the higher the number is, the milkier white the porcelain becomes. OE5 is an exception. OE5 is more orange looking and can be used for secondary dentin, for example. Again, the OE1 is getting built up towards the incisal and not facially outwards. We are adding some other materials on top of this later, so we would have ending up too protrusive. This is how it looks from the lingual side, and you can see that I build it almost to the level of the incisal edge of the facial cutback. The OE1 and power incisal 1 layers are just below the intended incisal edge. If you build it up a little bit too much and add your other materials on there later on top of it, your crown 
will end up way too high after firing. Remember, this bake does not shrink like a regular buildup because you have a solid dentin core already. Now I'm ready to add the mammalong porcelain. And what I do is I'm mixing this type of porcelain, I'm mixing the mammalong usually with staining liquid and not with buildup liquid. And the reason for this is when I'm layering new porcelain over the mammalongs, they don't wash out and they stay precisely where they should be. You can achieve very pointy mammalongs that don't tip over to the lingual or they don't dilute into the next layer. I'm using Mammalong Salmon, which is a peach looking and Mammalong Light for this case. And Mammalong Light is an ivory looking material. So Mammalong porcelains are the opaquest porcelain in your kit. So be very careful on how much you add because it blocks the light out quite a bit. On a bleach shade, I'm using Mammalong Light and not Mammalong Salmon or anything darker because it will stand out too much. On the other hand, if you're using Mammalong Light on an a4, for example, it will stand out too much as well. So in this case, I'm going to go with a little bit of a darker mammalong shade. What I see many technicians do is they start layering these mammalongs on the incisal edge and fading them out into the body. And what it does, it, it will appear way too intense and way too unnatural. When you start layering the mammalongs from the body, so the dentin core, and feathering out into the incisal, it will look much better and not as strong and not as prominent. In the micro layering, we are only using very little of the mammalong porcelain, and the most common error I see in technicians' cases is that there are three point very prominent mammalong streaks of white and salmon inside the crown. So start at the body and fade it out into the incisal edge. So in mammalong design, there's no right or wrong on how creative you, you can get. Um, there's only one basic rule. The upper central has three mammalongs, the lateral has two, and the canines, they have only one mammalong. In this case, I'm using mammalong light on the mesial and salmon in the mid area. What also looks really good is when you start with salmon in the body and feather mammalong light on top of it into the incisal. To demonstrate this, I'm spreading out the lower part of the mammalong light, what I applied here near the dentin, and I'm adding a little bit of salmon and I'm spreading this out again. Then what I do is I'm feathering it into the mammalong light to create a nice shade transition of the mammalongs. You can also separate the mammalong slightly with a sharp tip of the brush. My recommendation is using a new Smiline brush number 8 or something similar with natural hair that forms a really sharp and prominent tip. What also looks great is if you place small light mammalongs next to salmon mammalong while the salmon extends a little bit higher into the incisal edge. So what I do here is I'm taking the dry tip of my brush and I'm feathering them into the incisal edge, which I built up as an OE1 wall. After that, I'm framing the mammalongs using OE1. And because I mix the mammalong material with staining liquid and not with built up liquid, what's going to happen is I can build up this OE1 framing really nicely around the mammalongs and they will stay in place, they, will, they won't tip over and they will have a nice appearance. You can make them sharp and pointy and they look really fantastic. So the worst thing that I've seen technicians do is using water for this type of case because what's going to happen is it's going to dilute everywhere and they don't have any control of the layering anymore and it gets really, really messy. I'm extending the OE1 build up slightly over the mammalongs. In this stage, I can also control my intensity and my volume of the incisal edge. I could also use translucent blue or even a mix out of translucent blue with neutral 50-50 to create like a more bluish looking incisal edge. So what I'm going to do here, I'm not making the incisal edge too perfect and I'm not layering it too straight. I'm not completing the form. The more uneven I create it here, the more natural it will appear later on. I'm also overlapping the power incisal that I applied on the mesial and distal with OE1. If you want to have the incisal edge mesial and distal a little bit more translucent and get this nice translucent internal effect, you could add a little bit transfer blue here or even special incisal gray. 
The distal part on anterior teeth usually show a little bit more pronounced translucency, so adding T blue here is an option as well. Now I'm overlaying the incisal one third with an alternate layering pattern of power incisal one and power incisal two. In this example, I'm going for a shade of an A1 with an A2 as a ginger to create a more polychromatic shade transition, but on lighter shades, for example, like a bleach three or a bleach four, I'm using power incisal BL and power incisal one in combination. For even lighter shades, like BL1 or BL2, I'm using Power Incisor BL in a mix of 50-50 of Power Incisor BL and Neutral. Remember, this alternate layering pattern are all very thin layer and don't make the mistake to build it out too much. I've seen this so many times that technicians are applying way too much porcelain and then they have to grind it all back. The lateral I'm layering just like the central or only with two mammalongs. On the canine, which has one mammalong, I'm using mammalong salmon in the center. I'm also adding a little bit of special incisor gray to enhance the internal translucency next to the lining. From an occlusal view, I check if the original tooth shape is correct and if I didn't bulk it out too much facially. After I'm done with the layering, I place the units in a furnace for the first dentin bag. Important is here to place the units on a pack secured with pack party in the most horizontal way as possible. So what that will do is it will avoid that the porcelain is curling towards the incisal and I have to grind everything back. Now I'm ready to build up the second bay. And you might have noticed that the central has more chroma than the lateral and the canine. On the central I added more stain during the wash bake so I can demonstrate to you now how I solve this issue when it occurs to you as well. One way to compensate for this is just to fire another stain bake 10 degrees lower than the dentin bake. But to avoid this additional bake, I'm using cervical translucent yellow. It has just the right amount of color. I need to bump the chroma up slightly while completing the tooth shape. I'm adding the cervical translucent yellow only at the lateral and the canine in a thin but even layer. At the central, I'm using a very thin layer of OE5 to increase the chroma just that slightly while completing the shape. OE5 is in the opalescence family, but instead of white, it is slightly yellow and orange. And usually I use it as a secondary dentin bag. To create these nice translucent white line angles you see sometimes, I'm using OE4 in this case, on the mesial and distal, and I'm extending it over the incisal edge a little bit. You could also use OE3 if OE4 is too wide for you, or what I sometimes do, I'm mixing OE4 with neutral 50-50. So again, this micro layering, don't make the OE4 too thick. I see this all the time too as technicians. That's the biggest mistake, that they are coming from this regular layering pattern, they're adding too much porcelain on it, and then they don't get the desired outcome. If you add too much OE4, it will turn too wide. Also feathered into the gingival porcelain to create a nice transition. Don't make a hard stop there. During the layering for the second bake, I am trying to complete the tooth shape as accurate as possible. I want to avoid any major grinding later on after the firing. Again, I see this all the time on technicians. They are layering too much and they are grinding it all back and then I'm asking them, why did you even add it there? What I like to do is use my brush and shape the line angles in the outer contour of each tooth by pushing out the OE4 towards the adjacent tooth. Usually what I do, I don't continue with the rest of the layering and completing the layering until the outer shape is correct. I personally pay the most attention of the mesial line angles of the central and the laterals. I also make sure that the width of each contralateral tooth it's the same. I don't want to add porcelain later and grind off any translucent parts at the contact regions. I've seen this so many times. The technician build up big fat crowns, grind off the translucency at the contacts and end up with this gray line of translucency at the incisal edge. If you have seen this as well, leave a note in the comment section because I want to know about it. Then I use translucent incisal 1 and apply it in the center of the crown along the long axis. At the incisal edge, I spread the TI1 slightly out to implement a kind of filter. 
if you want to increase the translucency, you could also use neutral at the incisal edge instead. You could also add a little bit of cervical translucency here to create this orange looking effect you have in the incisal sometimes. Then what I do, I spread out the middle parts of the TI1 towards the mesial and distal. All of these porcelains I place during the second bake act like a filter to block the light. Like more or less, if you add more translucent material, your crown will get more translucent. If you add more opaque or more milky porcelain, your crown will get less translucent. So you can control how translucent, gray or high in value your crown will look in the end. After that, I just fill up the rest of the crown with a thin layer of neutral. What I also make sure of is that I complete the correct tooth shape I'm trying to achieve. And there are three different primary tooth shapes. There's a square, oval, and triangular ones. And if you want to know more about these different tooth shapes, let me know in the comment section. I will go over all these shapes in a different video when we contour these units. So I hope you liked this video and give it a thumbs up. If something was unclear or you have some questions, leave a note in the comment section and I will get back to you as fast as possible. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so, hit the notification bell and get updated on the latest content. Until then, stay tuned.